Hey guys, Rogue Flamingo here, bringing you my Guild Wars 2 leveling build series, which will feature a video for each of the 9 classes. The reason I'm doing this series is because the vast majority of build videos online seem to be solely focused on endgame meta builds, and I know from my engagement with the Guild Wars community that a lot of you out there want help with some of the more basic elements, so this one is for you guys. In these videos, I'll be going through all of the information you need to make sure your character is as powerful as possible all the way from level 1 to 80. I'll be covering the best weapon types to use for your class, as well as armor stats, runes, utility skills, and specializations. If you've not yet made up your mind which class you want to play, check out the class guide playlist on my channel, where I have a detailed guide on each of the classes to help you make that decision. I'd like to thank you all for your fantastic support I've received on my channel so far, and if you find this content useful, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to be kept up to date on my latest content. You can also follow me on Twitter at Heroic Flamingo, where I'll be posting regular updates as well as doing gem giveaways for you guys. Finally, I just wanted to let you guys know that there are two links in the video description that might interest you. The first one is to sign up for a free Guild Wars 2 account, so if you haven't got an account yet, do give that a click. And the second one is a link to the Guild Wars 2 store page, where you can purchase the Path of Fire expansion and get Heart of Thorns with it for no additional cost. All of these things help support the channel and I thoroughly appreciate it. Without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so now it's time to get into the leveling build for the Necromancer. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about are the weapons. So the weapons are probably the most important decision that you're gonna be making for your class. Obviously they define the first five skills on your bar here, as well as the five skills on your weapon swap as well. So you've got ten skills that are going to be relying on the weapons you're using. So it's really important that you choose the right ones. And people do ask me quite a lot, like, what's the best weapon for this class or that class? And although there isn't always an answer of, you know, what is the best weapon, um, there are certainly some that um, put themselves above the others, um, and I would normally recommend them. Obviously it depends how you play, but for this build, which is just going to be a standard leveling power build, I'm going to show you what I'm going to go with. So first up, you've got the axe and the offhand focus. So this is going to be your first weapon set here. So when you first start leveling your necromancer, you're going to want to go and get the axe. This is the best weapon for the necromancer, and bear in mind I'm talking a leveling build here, so I'm not including any of the elite specialization weapons, it's just the core necromancer. So Axe is a must, to be honest. Um, I would always recommend this for a necromancer. Um, it is actually a mid-range weapon, rather than actually a melee weapon, uh, which is quite interesting, so do bear that in mind. Uh, you've got your first skill, which has got 900 range, so it's pretty long range to be fair. And that's gonna slash your foe um, twice and make them vulnerable. So it's going to do damage as well as stick and vulnerability on the enemy. You've got your number two, which is Ghastly Claws. This is a really high damage skill, actually. Um, this hits multiple times. You can see it hits eight times. Um, bonus damage per vulnerability stack, you see. So it links up with your number one skill. Um, so you're going to want to use your number one skill and then use your number two to maximize your damage. Um, and as you can see, you also gain life force uh, per strike as well. And we'll be going into the life force in a little bit, which is just your bar here, which um, defines your your death shroud. Um, so, and then your number three, which is your final weapon um, skill for the axe. So you can see, unholy feast. So this shoots out um, to all enemies around you, crippling them and converting their boons into condition. So you're just a bit of boon strip, which is quite um, a big part of this build as well. Uh, and then you can see there's a follow up there which is invoke an explosion of dark energy and um, damaging nearby foes. So there's a decent amount of damage to enemies around you. Um, so that's a pretty good option as well. So that's the, the axe. So for this build I've paired the axe with the uh, offhand focus here. Um, there are a couple other options. A good contender is maybe an offhand dagger. Um, but I like to go with the focus. Um, makes this nice and um, consistently long range uh, this um, weapon set here so if you can't go near the enemy for whatever reason lots of AOE or something like that this is completely ranged so you can utilize this so your number four skill so your first one on the focus here soul grass so release a disem 
disembodied hand to draw life force from your foe. So once again, this is building up your life force. I'm going to go into that a lot while I'm going through this build. It's all about building up your life force. Um, number five, spinal shivers. So chill your target and remove up to three boons. Um, dealing extra damage based on the number of boons removed. So, so once again, boon strip, big part of this build, you're going to be utilizing that. So that's one of the reasons why I'm going with the uh, focus here because um, you've got much better boon strip and um, also uh, another thing there for buffing your life force so that's your first weapon set there and I'd recommend that obviously when you're starting out um, you don't unlock your um, second weapon set until you're level 10 so up until then I would just say first thing when you start the game grab an axe um, use that obviously you'll unlock your first few skills pretty quick and then um, once you start unlocking um, your level 4 and 5 skills, uh, so when you get to sort of level 6 and level 8, um, I'd say yeah, pick up a focus, pair it with your axe and, um, and do that. Another good mention for that actually is the, um, the offhand on my second weapon set here, which is the Warhorn, is a very good option actually. So potentially, your first weapon set before you unlock the um, weapon swap, you might want to go axe and Warhorn. But uh, I'll leave that up to you. It shouldn't matter too much at that level. Pretty basic content, so it shouldn't just be getting used to the build. But axe all the way, guys. So remember that. So second weapon set here. As you can see, I've gone with the dagger in the main hand. And then the warhorn in the off hand. So this is a closer range weapon set here. So you're going to want to use this to get up close and personal. Um, I wouldn't be too worried because it's, uh, the Necromancer is actually relatively tanky in comparison to your other um, Scholar professions. So it's not too bad having a melee option and you can obviously deal a decent amount of damage. So your number one skill is just a chain skill where you're going to slash them a couple of times and gain some life force. So once again, sucking some life force out of the enemy, getting this bar up, getting you closer to your death shroud. And um, as you can see, it's, it's um, like melee range, you have to be right up close to them to use that. Your number two skill um, on the dagger is Life Siphon. So you're going to siphon health from the enemy, um, healing effectiveness if, they're, if you're bleeding, damage increases if your foe is bleeding. Uh, so that links in with some of these other ones here. So you can see Dark Pact. So this is what I'm talking about. Immobilize your foe and bleed yourself. So that links in with your number two ability there. So you want to use your number three before your number two. So it does damage to the enemy, immobilizes them does some self bleeding and um, as you can see converts boons to conditions on enemies as well and then you can see so healing effectiveness increases if you're bleeding on your number two so you can link those together so just watch that when you're choosing which order to use your skills in that there is an optimum sort of um, order to use them in so for the offhand yeah like we said I've gone with the warhorn which I do like to be fair, so I would definitely recommend um, the Warhorn to use on one of your weapon sets, whether you pair it with the axe or the dagger. Um, it's good to pair with the dagger because um, they're generally close range abilities. They affect enemies that are close to you. Um, so you want to pair it with a close range weapon like the dagger rather than the axe. Otherwise you probably won't be able to utilize it properly. So your first skill on the Warhorn is Wall of Doom, uh, sorry, Whale of Doom which is uh, Screech a Whale of Doom in a cone pattern, dazing foes. So this shoots out a cone at enemies in front of you, dazing them for a couple of seconds. So it's a pretty good ability if you've got a bunch of enemies in front of you. You daze them and then just smash them up with all your other damage skills. Uh, your second and final ability on the Warhorn here is Locust Swarm, which is gain swiftness and summon a swarm of locusts that siphon health to you from nearby foes. So this is pretty cool. So literally, like I said, does what it says puts like a locust swarm around your character uh, so you can run up to them and it, it spreads as you can see it siphons health to uh, enemies from enemies to you so effectively with this setup here it's pretty good you can go in you can daze the enemies you can stick your locust swarm on uh, so you're siphoning health while using your close range abilities and once you've utilized these and they're all on cooldown you can always whack to your long range uh, things here roll back Maybe they're still dazed or they're just coming out of it now. They've had light, um, health siphoned from them and if you've done all your other close range abilities, you can then whack these out, stick your vulnerability on the enemy 
uh, do ghostly claws which does more damage to them and um, and then you can use these as well to draw your life force and do some boon strip um, as this number three ability as well damages all enemies around you it's quite good maybe to be the last one that you use before you go into your close range set because you could utilize your other ones while they're on cooldown and then you could go pressure number three ability bam you see that affects everyone around you then you can whack out your close range abilities and start using that first of all like i said daze your enemies locust swarm around you and then whack out your close range abilities here on your um, dagger before switching back hopefully to come back by then and utilizing these from long range so those are the um, weapon skills um, for this necromancer build which is pretty cool so let's move on and have a look at the healing and utility skills all right guys so now we're going to have a look at the healing utility and elite skills for this build um, so first up the healing skill uh, you have your healing skill from level one um, so you'll be able to pick this straight away um, consume conditions is the one that I've gone with uh, so this feasts on your conditions so you gain health for each consumed and you become vulnerable so it's got a decent um, base heal to it which is the main reason why I'm using it it's got a 30 second cooldown but you get extra healing per condition on you so normally most times you might have a couple of conditions on you and that's just going to buff the healing up a little bit more you can see it does put vulnerability on yourself it's just 5% incoming damage increase for four seconds so it shouldn't have too much of an effect but just do better in mind that you will be slightly more squishy for the next few seconds after using this skill so for the utilities your seven eight and nine skills you'll be unlocking these at level 11 level 15 and level 19 respectively uh, so better in mind you're not going to have these straight away um, but let's have a look at what we're going to go with so I've gone with Well of Darkness here, which is a ground target ability. So this is really good. So target area pulses, blinding foes with each pulse. So as you can see there, it does damage, blinds them and chill. So it's, it's quite effective from a damage point of view, but also blinds them so that the next outgoing attack misses and chills them as well so that they're slowed down. So this is quite a good one to use uh, straight off the bat when you're pulling an enemy and they're coming towards you. Obviously, if you've got your uh, long range weapon out, you can use this to slow them down um, while you can stack a bunch more damage on them so let me just show an example so literally you can place it relatively quite far away so if enemies coming towards you dump it on the head there you go everyone in this area is going to take damage going to slow them down and they're going to miss their next attack so it's a really good one um, which can also be paired with your next one which is Well of Suffering. So there's a, two similar abilities here, but you can stack them on top of each other, which is great. So Well of Suffering um, is another ground target ability with target area pulses, damaging foes and inflicting vulnerability. So if you dump these both on someone's head, so this one is going to do decent amount of damage over, over the period of time. As you can see, it pulses um, six times, once per second for six seconds. Uh, it's same as this it's got a decent radius and everything so you can put them down at the same place so vulnerability means obviously they're going to take more damage so what you could possibly do is if you're engaging some enemies and there's a group of enemies over here so over here um, you can stick these both down on them so seven and eight both in the same place you can't see that they're even both there but there's two rings there and what that's doing is that's putting vulnerability on them so all these abilities you're about to use and we're going to do even more damage as well as both of these have got a base damage to them as well so it's damaging them like that um, and they're also blinded and they're slowed so to be honest a lot of the time you can whack those both down on a group of enemies they're slowed down and they do vulnerability so you do more damage with your weapon skills by the time you've used all five of these weapon skills all of their health is already getting pretty low at which point you can switch to your melee weapon run in there and just finish them off basically with that so it's a pretty effective group of skills there right uh, so that's what I would recommend for your first two utility skills there those are your damage abilities for your final utility skill here I've gone with signet of spite there's a couple of signets you could actually choose from to put here I always do quite like to have a signet on my bar because it gives you that passive um, 
you know boost that you've got so in this case the passive is that it improves your power so as it's a power build that means you're going to be doing more damage uh, at all times while while this is active on your bar and not on cooldown so so that's pretty awesome so you're going to want to keep that um, do bear in mind that yeah you lose this bonus while the signet is on cooldown so don't spam this ability just for the sake of it just keep it on your bar get that extra power and you just do that little bit more damage um, so that that's the first thing and then there's the active ability so you can use this if you you know if you really need it I mean generally you would just keep the passive for this just to improve your power but the active is it inflicts bleeding, blindness, crippled, poison, vulnerability and weakness on your foe. So this could be paired with a couple of your uh, um, abilities if, they, if they're based on you know, how many conditions an enemy has because this sticks a bunch of conditions on there. But generally, yeah, you want this for the passive, but you know, you've got that. If you really want to stick a bunch of conditions on the enemies, um, then, then you can as well. Um, another option that some people go with, I think, is Signet of uh, Undeath as well, which is a good option. I do like this one as well because the passive on this is that it generates, generates life force while in combat. So whenever you're in combat, you're going to be generating life force. Um, so obviously this here is going to be going up and you're going to be able to get into Death Shroud quicker. So that is also a good option. Um, and then the active on that is you sacrifice health to revive a downed ally. So that's the sort of one that you would have just for the passive on there on your bar so that's a really good option so i don't really have too much of a preference between the two i think they're both really good options um so either one i think would would suit you well i think the active ability on this one is probably a bit more useful but if you're just using it for your passive which you pretty much are then yeah one of these would probably be your best bet so i'm gonna have a look at the elite skill uh, so the elite skill I'm going with is one that you pretty much use on most builds on the, on the uh, Necromancer. It's a really good one. It's the Summon Flesh Golem. So this is the minion ability, uh, minion elite skill that is. So you summon a Flesh Golem to attack foes with crippling claws. So this is a big um, golem that's going to um, you know, aggro some of the enemies, do damage and cripple them to reduce their movement speed. So it's good because it tanks the enemies a bit and stops them from getting to you by crippling them. So it's a really effective one. I mean, the great thing about minions uh, on Necromancers on the Guild Wars, in Guild Wars 2 is that they literally don't expire unless they die, which is awesome. So you can just have it with you at all times. So just remember to always have this cast and this Flesh Golem, it's gonna be with you at all times, just a companion, you know, especially if, you know, most of the time you're gonna be using this build, you know, maybe for soloing and PVE content and everything. Um, you are going to, you know, want that, especially as a scholar profession. Like I said, you are tankier than the other scholar professions, but at the end of the day, you are still using light armor, so it's really good to have this guy with you. So it's really useful, and then he's got an active ability as well, which which doesn't expire the um, the minion either. So you can just whack this out on cooldown. It's got a 40 second cooldown, and this commands your flesh golem to gain stability and charge a foe, knocking down or launching enemies in its path. So as you can see. It, yeah, so it's going to be, it can't be knocked down or anything like that for quite a while. So it just makes it more tanky, knocks over a bunch of enemies. So you can just use that every 40 seconds pretty much. There's no reason not to to, to knock enemies down and just um, make your golem just that much more tanky as well with that stability buff. So this is a really good option. There's not really any other ones I would recommend. I would always go with this as my elite skill. So I'm going to stick with that. So I recommend you go with that. Um, obviously other options for utility skills here, you know, you can go with other minion skills as well um, You know, it's always a viable option. You can have multiple minions with you So, you know, you have a few options to choose from but to be honest I think when you've got this minion, it's obviously the best one. So it's an elite skill. He's with you at all times I don't think it's really necessary because I think that um, You know these two abilities do so much damage you can dump them on the head so once you're used to that I mean, by the time you've done all that, your minions barely had enough time to get into battle and you've probably already killed the enemy. So I'd focus more on the damage from that perspective. But just know, you know, you can always stick a minion in there. I mean, even on this skill, maybe if you really didn't want the passive and you wanted three skills you could use there, um, then, you know, you could always stick another minion skill on there. You could do your Shadow Fiend or, or even your Bone Fiend there. But this is, you know, what I like to use and I found quite successful. You've got your two... Um, 
ground targeted abilities there that you stick on top of the enemy you've got your passive that you just leave there and then you've got um your what do you call them your fiend um your flesh fiend that just hangs around with your flesh golem that's the one and um he does decent amount of damage as well whilst keeping the enemies off you uh, and slowing them down by crippling them so that's my um healing utility and elite skill options as well um so the next thing i'm going to have a look at are like the armor and weapon stats that you want to be going to make your build as powerful as possible all right so let's have a look at the stats okay so you're going to be wanting to go with power as your main stat so this is a, a purely power build so when you start leveling obviously um, when you first start getting gear you're going to maybe have one stat on it and that stat you always want to be power so basically for this build anything where power isn't the top main stat with the biggest amount just throw it away is no use to you so even from you know level one when you whenever or level two or whenever you start getting some stats on your gear that isn't just obviously the defense um then you're going to want to be getting power so that is your main focus so i think for the first sort of 10 levels you're only going to have one stat so power it is just make sure that's what it is it's always going to be what you want to do that's just going to buff your damage so increases your attack damage so all of your skills are going to do more damage the more power you have so you pretty much can't have too much power so just keep putting it on that um, when you start getting a second stat um, it probably won't matter too much at that point and you can mix it up but I would normally go with um, precision or a mixture of precision and ferocity um, basically most power builds are you know focused on power precision and ferocity because power is your damage precision is your critical hit chance and ferocity is your critical hit damage so a mixture of those normally leads to the highest possible damage output so the second skill yes yeah, so you probably want a mixture of precision and ferocity because you don't want to just focus on one because obviously if you've got loads of precision you'll be doing loads of critical hits but if you don't have a lot of ferocity those critical hits won't be doing much damage and uh, same again if you get loads of ferocity uh, without any precision you'll find that yeah your critical hits may do a lot of damage but they're few and far between so a mixture of both is definitely the optimum thing so that's quite obvious then when you get to your free stat armor uh, which will be taking um, all the way up to uh, when you're level 80 you're going to want to be going with power precision and ferocity that's that's a given um, that's going to and settle like that by the way obviously because there are a few different mixtures you want power as the biggest one and then precision and ferocity as the slightly lower ones that's going to make your character as powerful as possible so if you remember that through the whole time you're leveling you power 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 straight from the start always want that that's going to make you more powerful don't get something that just has vitality or something like that yeah it gives you a bit more health but for most part power is the most important thing but talking about vitality do bear in mind that you've got vitality and toughness vitality being increasing your health and uh, toughness being increasing your sorry increasing your armor so both make you harder to kill um, the necromancer actually has a higher base health than any of the other scholar professions um, so you naturally are a bit tankier and then with, with your death shroud as well which we'll go into um, that is also going to make you more tanky so to be honest you're not you probably won't find yourself desperate for vitality you won't feel you're too much of a glass cannon with this one um, but at any time you know if you if you've got two or three stat you can always stick in some vitality I mean what I would recommend obviously I've got to level 80 here what I've got here is that I've got uh, power precision frosty on all of my armor and my weapons making that as powerful as possible but on my accessories here I've gone power vitality frosty I think yeah on all of them so my accessories there so what that does is that means that I'm going to be uh, getting a decent amount of extra health all of my main ones here are all going to be precision and ferocity so I'm up in my damage uh, and you could if you don't need it you could make all of these power precision and ferocity as well and that would give you the optimum amount of damage like the maximum amount of damage you're going to be able to do so that could always be recommended for a power build but you've really got to just get used to it and see how you feel if you feel that you need a little bit more health you you know you get one shotted if you're doing group content or something you just want to add a little bit of vitality in I would never really recommend to go mad and start adding in you know changing this from your uh, power precision and frosty and adding in vitality on all of these 
wouldn't really recommend that um because to be honest yeah, yes you know you'll become harder to kill but it'll take you longer to kill the enemies uh, and you'll just level a lot slower anyway um so that's why power builds are normally recommended for leveling because you can kill things quicker uh, so yeah a little bit of vitality on here or if you really need it um you can do one that's like power vitality and toughness and you can stick that on there but to be honest you probably won't need too much uh, and the berserker stats power precision frosty is probably going to cover you most of the time so that's going to um be what you're going to be aiming for so just remember that always stick with the power whenever you can okay so that's all of the armor stats so the next thing i want to have a look at are the specializations and traits Alright guys, so now we're going to have a look at the traits and specializations. Okay, so this is going to make this build a lot more powerful. So it's quite an important step. It's probably one that you don't think about as much. You obviously think about like your armor and weapons and stuff like that. But specializations, super important for making your build as powerful as possible. So definitely don't ignore this step. So overall, like obviously once you're a higher level, you're going to have spike, soul reaping and probably death magic as your three specializations spite and soul reaping are a must you definitely want those as part of this build um there's nothing better death magic you could swap this out if there was something you preferred but i probably think this is the most effective one so let's just go with how you're going to start so obviously when you first start leveling this isn't really a concern anyway because it's not until level 21 that you unlock your top specialization here so we're going to focus on that once you reach level 21 you're going to start by unlocking the spite specialization this is going to be your priority uh, and then you can put um, your skill points into this and then you won't actually unlock your second slot until level 45 so it's a little bit of time before you have to start worrying about that so let's have a look at your options on the uh, spite tree here so your first passive on this um, just basically means that using your number one skill in your death shroud grants you might um, the second one is death's embrace well which is deal increased strike damage while downed inflict vulnerability when you strike a foe below the health threshold and your third passive here is siphon power which is gain might when you strike a foe below the health threshold so these are all focusing on you know um, basically gaining might and and might gives you power so it, it feeds right into your power build basically just making you more powerful just by having those active and you'll unlock those as you get more um skill points and you can spend them on the passives obviously what we're going to have a look at are the um the ones that you're actually going to choose so i've gone top middle middle on my spike tree here it's not always you know an exact science there might be one that you prefer you can always look and choose one of the other options but I'm just going to have a little look at these and, and just sort of give you my reasoning. So your first one here, Spiteful Talisman. So deal increased strike damage to foes with no boons. Focus and axe skills recharge faster. So oh, that one's quite obvious. So it buffs your focus and your axe, which you're both using here in this weapon set. So you're going to be doing more damage and... Um, Oh, sorry your skill is going to recharge fast, faster but you're going to deal more damage to foes without boons which which goes in with that as well because if you remember there's quite a lot of boon strips specifically here on your number five and that means you're going to be doing 10% more damage to people without boons um, so that's quite an obvious one there and I definitely recommend going with that one so here I've gone with middle so awaken the pain so might grants you more power and less condition damage gain might when entering shroud Okay, so that one's quite obvious as well so normally you know as you can see all the passives on here give you might um, might normally gives you i think an equal amount of condition damage and power but obviously we're not so bothered about condition damage we want to focus on power so this one just uh, skews it more in the direction of power so it, it just helps us focus more on that so once again all of this is just making you uh, have a higher damage output and then your final choice here on the spike tree is close to death which is deal increased strike damage to enemies below the health threshold so damage increase of 20 percent and the health threshold is only 50 percent so that's quite good to be honest so 20 percent extra damage if they're below 50 percent health so that's going to be quite a lot of the time um so i think that's just adds a lot of damage so it's definitely worth going with that one um that obviously there's other options here, Dread, inflicting fear on, on foe gives you boons, you know, buffing yourself there. 
There's some good options, but I think this one just for pure damage for a power bill while you're leveling, I think that's definitely the best option to go with. So yeah, I'm going to stick with that top middle middle on the spike tree. And once you get to level 45 and you unlock your second um, uh, specialization here, definitely want to go with soul reaping. It's a must. And the, um, the passives on soul reaping are gluttony, which is increase the amount of life force gained from all sources. So we're going to be able to get this up even quicker. Sinister Shroud, which is Shroud skills, gain reduced recharge. And your third one is Maximum Life Force is increased, so 20% extra life force here. So all of these are buffing your Shroud, making it easier to get or making the recharge faster on them. Um, we're going to go into it very soon. I'm going to go into using the Shroud on this build. It's a really big part of it, so using Soul Reaping is really important here. So in terms of the choices, I've gone top, top, middle here. So first one we've got unyielding blast which is shroud skill one inflicts vulnerability so that's gonna be your number one skill when you go into shroud is going to be putting vulnerability on enemies which is good which means all your other um, abilities will do more damage so I'd recommend that and we've got soul barbs which is entering or exiting shroud increases all damage you deal for a duration uh, you'll be going in and out of shroud relatively frequently so if that gives you extra 10% damage for 10 seconds then you're gonna have that up quite a lot of the time and as we've already figured out more damage the better on this build and our final one here is death perception so gain increased critical strike chance and ferocity when in shroud um, so yeah critical chance increased by 33% and increased ferocity 116 while in a shroud so to be fair that you know that's really effective um, and you can be, like we said, we're going to be in Shroud quite a lot, so I definitely recommend going with that. Um, but also, have a look. If any of the other options you prefer, you can always go with, but I'm just giving you a guide here. This is what I found to be the best ones. Um, this one is quite good as well. Uh, Eternal Life. Gain life force every interval up to the threshold when not in Shroud. So when you're not in Shroud, you gain 3% life force every second, up to 66%. Um, and you gain protection when you enter Shroud. So that's a really good one for buffing your... Um, uh, your life force and your shroud so that's a really good option but this buffs your shroud to do more damage so if you just want to do more damage the middle one uh, if you want some extra protection when you go into shroud as well as get if you feel like you're not getting into shroud quick enough you can always go with that the reason I'm the main reason I'm not and I'm going with the middle one is because with all of these skills that we've picked and everything like that um, our life force generation should be high enough at this point anyway so the extra damage is better but, you know, uh, feel free to have a look at the other options as well. Okay, so your third specialization, um, which to be fair, you can be flexible with this. You could go with one of the other ones if you preferred it. I mean, I go with Death Magic here. Um, but like I said, you can go with a different option. This isn't a must. But if you want my advice on this, which you probably do as you're watching this video, then I would go with Death Magic. And I've gone with bottom, bottom, bottom for my options here. Um, and let's just quickly look at the passive bonuses of this one. So you've got Armoured Shroud, so gain Carapace when entering Shroud. So that gives you extra toughness and power. So it gives you a little bit more damage and you're a little bit harder to kill when you enter Shroud. So that's always good. So the um, sorry, the uh, other, the next passive is Soul Comprehension, which is your passive life force generation from nearby deaths is increased. And kills grant carapace so yep you're going to be getting life force quicker and um yep even more carapace <laughs> and then beyond the veil take reduced condition damage while at or above the threshold of carapace stacks which is 10 so um condition damage reduced by 10 percent so once again it's all about stacking up that carapace and in terms of our three options here Let's see we've gone bottom here which is shrouded removal so lose a condition when you enter shroud and every few seconds while you remain in shroud gain carapace when removing conditions from yourself okay yes yeah, so that's pretty good so you're going to be removing conditions there and as you see even more carapace carapace stacks grant power so this so normally i think carapace by default probably just gives you toughness but this means that we add power to that as well which is obviously great for me stacking up a lot of that then we're going to want to be using that to add some extra power to our build 
And finally, we've got Unholy Sanctuary, which is regenerate health while in shroud. If your life force is above the threshold, your shroud will activate um, if you take a lethal blow. So, yep, so while you're in shroud, your health will regenerate, which is good. So if you use shroud because your health was low, then that'll be good because you'll be um, getting, when you come out of shroud, you won't be so close to death. And yeah, if you take a lethal blow, you automatically go into shroud. Um, if your life force, so what's that? If your life force is above the threshold, that's only 10%. So your life force will pretty much always be above 20%, uh, 10%. So if it is, if you take a lethal strike, like as in a hit that would normally kill you, you'll go straight into um, death shroud, which means that you'll be really hard for you to die. That does have a 30 second cooldown on it, so it's not like god mode, but still really effective then. It's gonna make you really difficult to kill. Okay, so that is all of the specializations. As I said, Spite, Soul Reaping is a must. Definitely go with them and I recommend this layout. Third one is optional. Um, you could even go Death Magic and change up the options. If you go along the top there, that's gonna buff minions quite a lot. So if you had like another minion skill, so you had a couple, that might be a good option. But I'm going with Death Magic all across the bottom there. I find that to be pretty effective. Um, so yeah, that's my options for the specializations. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the profession mechanics. Okay, so now we're going to have a look at the profession mechanic for the Necromancer, and that's the Death Shroud. So the Death Shroud plays a really big part in this build. I've mentioned it a few times already without going into too much detail, and you should know that obviously it's based off your life force bar. So a lot of the skills that we've got and the traits within our specializations are literally focused around building up our life force as quickly as possible and that means that we can stay in death shroud for as long as possible so you want to keep up your death shroud time as much as you can uh, and that's one of the biggest aims of this build so you're going to be building it up quickly and you and obviously a lot of our things are buffing our abilities in death shroud um, so whenever this gets up you can use it so i mean you can do it in a couple of ways you can wait for this to fill up and use it you don't want to wait for it to fill up and then go sort of just carry on because then you're wasting time that you could be in death shroud so to be honest you probably want to use it sort of when it's about to fill up so that you don't like waste any life force or anything like that it's got like a it's got a 10 second cooldown when you come out of it so you can go back into it pretty quickly if you're building up your life force you can go in and out of it um, whenever you want so you might do it when you're at a lower life force if for example you need it to survive so bear in mind when you go into this um, the life force replaces your health bar um, so it sort of like keeps you alive for that period of time as well. So if you, you know, if you're gonna die, I mean, we have, you did see that we used that particular um, trait, which meant that it automatically goes into um, death shroud if we're close to dying. But if you don't have that, just remember if your health gets low, go into death shroud, and and that can you know help keep you alive, and you can probably finish off the enemies with a lot of the powerful abilities that death shroud has as well. Um, so you want to utilize that as much as you possibly can and we're going to be building it up uh, and you can just whack it out to uh, to kill your enemies pretty quickly so let's have a, a quick look so if we go into death shroud we've got life blast which is going to blast them with um, with our life force number two dark path we're going to send out a claw um, and it inflicts bleeding and chill and we can shadow step to the enemy by pressing it again number three fears enemies number four damages nearby foes and steals their life and number five is begin blinding enemies nearby with life force, pulsing conditions out. So that's pretty sick there, let them mobilize everything. So number five stacks loads of conditions on enemies. Number four, so you're number four in Death Shroud. That's like such a powerful ability. It drains the life from everyone around you. So you're gonna to wanna to use that when you're close to enemies. Everyone around you, you're gonna be draining their health. So it's really good. So obviously it's replenishing you, but it's doing a lot of damage. Just a lot of damage to be fair. Very noticeable to the enemies around you. And as you saw, number two, you can use um, to inflict some conditions and then shadow step to the enemy. So perhaps use your um, number two um, and then press it again to shadow step to the enemy. And then you can use up your number four to suck every, all the life out of everyone around you. Number five, stick loads of conditions on the enemies, which is excellent. So you can use that to put lots of conditions on your enemies. And then um, you can always, you know, come back and then you've got all these skills back as well. So obviously while you're doing that, you know, you might have used all your abilities here. They're on cooldown. Another option, another like reason to use Death Shroud, you can use that. And obviously they'll all be 
um, the cooldowns will be finished by the time you come back. So it's just like another um, another weapon skill bar. So it's like a third weapon, but also you know replaces your armor as well, making you um, replace your health bar. Sorry, meaning that you can't actually take the damage for that amount of time. So it's really effective, and it's something that you're going to want to utilize a lot in this build. Um, so definitely don't ignore that and don't just leave it at full life force and not use it. You want to use it as much as possible to um, to increase the damage. So that's a really good option. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers everything for this um, particular Necromancer leveling build. Um, I think it's a really effective build. I've leveled all the way from 1 to 80 with this build. Um, and you know I think the weapons are really good and there's a bit of melee. A lot of range in there um, I like the utility skills the conditions you can put on with these two slowing enemies down I like to have a signet like I said having a minion that's really awesome follows you around at all times never needs to go away tanks the enemies pressing it again does even more so that's really effective and then going in and out of death shroud whenever you can gives you a whole new set of weapon skills does a bunch of damage and also keeps you alive so to be honest overall this build is particularly tanky and also does a lot of damage. So for a power build, especially from a scholar profession, you know, if you've got if you've got a power build with a light armor profession, you expect to be a bit of a glass cannon. But with this build, I don't really think that's the case. And if you feel that you're dying a little bit too easy, you can always throw a little bit of extra vitality or toughness into your armor stats. But remember, mostly power, power, precision, frosty for most of it gives you the ultimate damage. So thanks for watching guys, I will leave you with a little bit of footage of just doing some combat on this um, particular build, um, just so you can see what it looks like, but thanks for watching and I'll see you later.